Windows servers have the capability of adding virtual machines, and the product for Microsoft on Windows servers is called Hyper-V. We can install Hyper-V by going into the Add Roles and Features section of a Windows 2022 server, and this also works on older servers as well. Your hardware has to be able to support virtualization in order for this to work. I'll click Next until I choose the server that I'd like to install it on and then get to my server roles and choose Hyper-V from the list. I'll also add the features that are required to make this work as well. I'll click Next. So now I'll get to the Hyper-V network adapter. I'm going to click Next, Next again. And now it's asking for the default location for the virtual hard disk files, as well as the configuration files. I'll go ahead and browse to this PC, my C drive. I'll make a new folder and I'll call it VMs. And that's where I'll install my virtual machines and click Next. And now I'll choose to install Hyper-V. After Hyper-V is installed, it will require a restart. And then we'll be able to log in and start using Hyper-V by adding in a new virtual machine. As I mentioned, but I'd just like to clarify, you can install Hyper-V onto a physical machine, such as a Windows 2022 server running on a Dell or an IBM server or an HP server, anything like that, that has those types of capabilities. Once you install Hyper-V, you can then install Hyper-V on top of a virtual machine, as I'm doing right here. There's many advantages for this, such as guest failover clustering, as well as being able to move your virtual machine around to other servers at will. Installation is now complete, and I'll need to restart, and then I can pick up by creating my first virtual machine in Hyper-V on a Windows 2022 server. My server has restarted. And I'll go to Tools, and I'll see a new option here that wasn't there before called Hyper-V Manager. Inside Hyper-V Manager, there's several different things to configure. So I'll select the server. And on the right-hand side, you can see things like the Hyper-V settings, Virtual Switch Manager, and other things. I'd like to just take a quick look at Hyper-V settings, and here you can see the various different settings that make Hyper-V work prior to adding in our first virtual machine, such as the virtual machine location, live migration, so we can migrate to another Hyper-V server, so that way we can have redundancy, and the replication configuration, along with other options. I'm going to go ahead and create my first virtual machine by right-clicking on the server and choosing New, and then Virtual Machine. And a wizard will pop up where I'll walk through the location and type of Virtual Machine. Here is the name. I'm just going to put in the name as VM1. Now, I can store the Virtual Machine in a different location, or if I uncheck this, it's just going to be in the default location that you see here, and click Next. Now we have the option for the generation. Generation 1 is for 2008 and older, but Generation 2 would be for anything newer than 2008, such as 2012, all the way up through 2022. Now we want to add up the startup memory. Now you don't want to use more memory than you have available on your host computer. Now in my case, I have 32 gigabytes free, so I feel pretty comfortable putting in 8 gigabytes of RAM. So we'll put in approximately 8 gigabytes. It shows it as 8,000 megabytes, so it's very close to 8 gigabytes. And now I'm going to choose my virtual switch that was automatically created when I installed Hyper-V. And if everything looks the way you want it, you can click Next and Finish. I'm going to change the size to 50 gigabytes, but it really doesn't matter as long as there's enough space to install the operating system, and then it can expand that size over time. If you put in too little, then it'll hit whatever size gigabyte maximum you have, and then you could end up running out of space. But 50 gigabytes with nothing else on it should be fine. Now I have to install an operating system, so I'm going to choose the bootable image file, click Browse, and I've gone ahead and downloaded 
a version of Windows Server 2022 ISO file from Microsoft. And you can get this from your vendor, or you can get a demonstration version from Microsoft's Demo Center. So I'll click Finish. And the virtual machine has now been created. I'll go ahead and get started with the installation, but it does take some time to complete. So just knowing that the installation is started will make it so that the server will reboot after the installation is done, and then the virtual machine will start working. Now you can see it's loading up the virtual machine files from the ISO file. That is going to be the bootable file for us. And here's the familiar wizard that you would see on any Windows installation. If you have a product key, you can install it now. If you don't have it yet, you can click on I don't have a key and it will still install. I'm going to choose the standard desktop experience so I get the graphical user interface after the installation is complete. And a few clicks later, we now see the installation has started. Installing Hyper-V in a Windows 2022 server, along with virtual machines, can save space, power, and money for your organization.